My name is Daniel Harris, youth worker, biker, husband and father, and now training to become a minister with the United Reformed Church. A popular spiritual mantra says, life is a journey, not a destination. As many of us live by this philosophy, I thought that I would test it out. So I went on a 1500 mile round trip on my motorbike to visit the ancient island of Orkney. I rode over the Cairngorms and camped at John O'Groats. I rode across the Churchill Barriers and visited Skara Bray, the best preserved Neolithic village in Northern Europe. I also checked out some of the more modern places of worship in Orkney. We often assume that life is a one-way journey from cradle to grave. We meet people along the way. We experience both good and bad times and our spiritual and moral characters are forged on the open road. But occasionally, we come to a crossroads. Then, we may need to take a new direction or travel with other people for a while. But there are also more ancient routes, cut out by pilgrims over millennia, which could help us on our way. This is my own journey, to discover some of those ancient voices and let them speak into my own life. My trip to Orkney was always going to be spiritual. I wanted to experience some of Orkney's recent religious history, as well as some of its more ancient spirituality. As I am training to become a minister with the United Reformed Church, I decided to visit the church in Kirkwell. This is the denomination's most northerly congregation. It's easy to dismiss the smaller, often elderly gatherings. But in a time when our tribal elders are not shown respect and care for them seems to have low priority, these congregations create a quality of community which is quite inspiring. The Italian chapel was built during the Second World War by Italian prisoners of war. In 1939, a German U-boat sank a battleship anchored off the Orkney coastline. Winston Churchill ordered the building of giant causeways to protect boats from future attack. These Churchill barriers were built by the prisoners of war. The Italians requested a proper place of worship. They were given two army Nissan huts, 
which were joined end to end to convert into a chapel. Frescoes and altar carvings and stained glass windows were all created from materials scavenged from the prisoner of war camps. The interior of the chapel was painted to depict brick walls, carved stone, vaulted ceilings and buttresses. The result is a testament to their endeavour in overcoming adversity and a dedication to their faith. The Churchill Barriers now act as roads to connect the islands. In 2014, a motorcyclist was tragically killed crossing the barrier nearest the chapel. A memorial bench has been placed outside the chapel to remember him. The famous Ring of Brodga represents Orkney's ancient heritage. It also functions as part of an enormous prehistoric ritual complex. The stone circle sits in the heart of a natural cauldron formed by the hills of the surrounding landscape. When the ring was first erected, the Stennis Lock didn't exist. Instead, the area was wet, surrounded by marshy bog and pools of water. As with modern churches, it is highly likely that the stone circle served several functions. Maybe it was a Neolithic observatory, or for remembering the ancestors, or a massive communal building project. But the grandeur of the Ring of Brodgo speaks of the sheer effort that the ancient Arcadians put into their acts of worship. We cannot be sure what their religion looked like, but the Ring of Brodka stands to this day to remind us of their spirituality and beliefs. The Ring of Brodka also confronts us with some tough questions. What do we believe in? How do our beliefs shape our own lives? And in the years to come, what will remain to speak of our spirituality to other people? Long before Stonehenge or the Egyptian pyramids were built, Skara Bray was a thriving village. Dating back 5,000 years, it is the best preserved Neolithic settlement in Western Europe. It was slowly abandoned, perhaps due to climate change and evolving cultural practices, but stands today in testimony to our, our ancestors' way of life. The fragility of life in this tough landscape reminds us of our own vulnerability. While we think we have the strength to endure many hardships, perhaps we should be cautioned against the arrogant belief that we can conquer all. 
Like the villages of Scara Bray, we too, one day, will be gone. They tell us that life is a journey, not a destination. But maybe the destination is more important than we think. After all, we all hope that we are not on some random journey through life. We all hope that our lives have meaning and purpose. But our own journey through life can have its effect on the soul. Maybe we feel inspired by the journey. Or maybe we are tired from having travelled a high mileage or burnt out from a fast-paced lifestyle. Either way, one day we will arrive at a crossroads in life. The prophets of old challenge us. They challenge us to stop, to turn off our engines and to look around. We may think about going our own way again. Instead, try a new direction. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, once said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.